excellent greetings and good afternoon to all. Thank you for accepting our invitation to this webinar in English title, Regular and Substantive Interaction, Desmystifying the Dole Regulations and Engaging in the Online Classroom. With today's speaker, Professor Kim Estes from Southern County College, Connect Campus. Thank you for your valuable collaboration with HEAD initiative that aim to provide special support to member institutions as part of our mission to promote the integration of technology into education. Today, we have more than 70 participants registered from 10 higher education institutions in Puerto Rico, also from six higher education institutions in the state, in the United States, and two organizations. Greetings to all. We hope this webinar will be a, of great benefit to everyone. Before we start the webinar, we would like to share a few things as we usually do. For your convenience, closed captions are available in English for this webinar. To activate this feature, click the CC Live Transcript button that you will see in your uh, screen. Uh, remember also to use the chat to share. Hold on for a second, that is not more. Okay. Use the chat uh, to, uh, to do your questions or, your, or any comments as well. Also, keep your mic microphone on mute to avoid interruptions. Access the link in the chat to request your certificate of participation or a scan the QR code that you see on the screen. Um, please remember to provide your full name and a correct email. So when we uh, prepare the certificates, could be able to uh, be delivered to the correct email. Because if you put a, 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 a typo on your email, it will be bound. So thank you so much again for always uh, taking uh, into consideration this important uh, topics also at the end of this webinar it's very important that you will be receiving an, an email uh, with a link to complete a survey a very short survey to help us evaluate this webinar and help us identify with head, uh, which head services and initiatives can best support not only your faculty and administrators but also your students and your feedback to promote this services. This survey is anonymous and the estimated time to complete it is around five minutes. So we will appreciate your co cooperation and your feedback is very important to us. Uh, we also would like to invite you to spread the word and invite others to our next events. Just remember that you just need to register at heads.org under next events. You will see all the different events and also follow up in social media. And let me do a very recap. The next event will be a webinar in Spanish talking about Descubre Tus Ahorros. Uh, in, uh, it will be a Friday, uh, November 18 at 10, 11 a.m. And please join us if you want to. Also, this is not a virtual event, it's an in-person event in Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico, in the convention center. It's called the Zoom Student Experience Summit. It's totally uh, free of charge. And we invite you to spread the word among your students so they can benefit from this in, uh, interesting uh, event for students. Also, we are already putting together the topic and we already have uh, the confirmation of Dr. Barbara Flores assistant professor from Bronx Community College, who will be joining us in the Student Leadership Showcase English edition that is scheduled for December 2, from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eh, eh, Atlantic Standard Time, eh, or oh, Puerto Rico time, because remember next weekend, the, you change your time, but Puerto Rico don't. So then now we'll be Atlantic Standard standard time, so please make sure you have the correct time in order to connect. Uh, also, we have uh, a webinar in December 9 in Spanish as well, 
talking about uh, negociar sin ceder de método Harvard. And very important, we would like to invite you uh, and stay tuned for the full issue of the Heads Online Journal, available, it will be available late in November. And this full issue is now featuring a new open access platform with articles discussing, discussing top, uh, topics as research in the field of integration of technology, online education, assessment, and other topics. So please make sure uh, you uh, uh, enter to this new platform to read this important article. And finally, I would like to mention that although we'll be next semester, we already uh, have opened uh, the call for articles for the best practices showcase that will be held in February 2, 2nd and 3rd. 2023 at the Ana de Mendez Carolina campus. This will be a hybrid modality in a hybrid modality and we are already accepting proposals until November 18. So you still have time to uh, submit your proposal either on the track of under access, retention and online learning and technology integration in higher education. And for this, uh, for the first time, um, and since we are celebrating our 30th anniversary, also the Best Practices Showcase will include a student track and all the details are available at the heads.org website, including the registration to also participate uh, to the conference and save your space. And also I would like to share with uh, others uh -huh. Please also share these invitations with others so they can register and benefit. And we also want to encourage you to invite your students uh, to access the and use the Peterson test prep where students can find scholarships, practice tests, and ebooks to prepare for those tests, such as the PCAT, the ELSA, the GRE, NCAT, among others. And there is also there is also the Peterson Career Press where students can search for jobs and internships, create, res create resumes and find career advice among other services. And if you don't know the, to enter the database are very easily, uh, go to the student placita, click on the different links, either the Peterson Test Press or Career Press. And if you don't know the password for your institution, please send us an email to info at head to provide this uh, passcode to you so you can access those databases. Now we are ready to start our webinar and I am pleased and honored to present our guest speaker today for uh, Professor King Estes, a 25 year veteran of public education. King Estes is the senior instructional designer for Tarrant County College Connect Campus. Uh, prior to returning to the classroom for two years, where she was award, she was awarded secondary teacher of the year uh, for 2020 for Cleveland Independent School District. Clean was the lead, also the lead learning technology uh, coach for the Burleson Independent School di District, both in Texas. In her 14 years with Burleson, she assisted with the adoption and rollout of instructional technology, delivered professional development for instructors and administrators, and supervise a team of learning technology coaches who provide instructional support district wide. Keen is a Google certi certified trainer and the 2015 CCEA Instructional Technologies of the Year and is passionate about the role of technology in instructional learning and has presented at the local, regional, state, national, and international level. She also holds several certifications, including Master Teacher of Technology and her principal certification. Her master's degree is in curriculum and instruction with an emphasis on technology education and another master's degree in educational technology leadership. She is currently pursuing her doctorate in instructional systems 
Design and Technology through Sam Houston State University. On a personal note, Keen is the proud wife of a retired Navy chief, the blessed mother of six children. How you do it, Akin? And the delighted grandmother to five adorable grandchildren. So thank you, Keen. It has been a pleasure to have you here and that you accept our invitation. I'm going to stop sharing my presentation so you can start uh, yours. So okay. thank you so much again for your time. Go ahead. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and, and put this up and then can someone give me a thumbs up so I know you can see my screen okay? Yes. Terrific. Terrific. Thank you. Well, I am so excited to be here and to represent Tarrant County College Connect Campus today to talk a little bit about regular and substantive interaction and the Department of Education's requirements for what online learning must meet in order to qualify for full funding for financial aid, um, because these items are tied together. My contact information is on this first slide, as well as a link to this presentation, so that if you would like a copy of my slides, you can follow that link right there. And um, you can see a copy of these slides and follow along. I have to say um, a huge shout out and a thank you to my team member, Lindsay Foster, who loaned me all of her good stuff for the presentation today. She was the um, instructional designer tasked with pre uh, creating resources for our staff and faculty regarding regular and substantive interaction at our campus. And so I'll be showcasing a lot of her work today, um, a lot of the hard work that she did when we get into the example portion of the presentation. So I'll just leave that for one more second. So those of you who would like to have an, um, uh, that bit.ly or that URL, and actually I think I'll go ahead and bounce to the next slide because it is on this slide as well. Um, and today what we're going to talk about, we have four different sections that I'd like to discuss with you. First, of course, we're gonna talk about the federal regulations for regular and substantive interaction. These are not new items. This has been around for a while, but after the pandemic, the Department of Education realized that they needed to really clarify their position on what, um, what actually represented regular and substantive interaction in terms of uh, a course being determined eligible for financial aid. So we're going to talk about those new um, July of 2021 changes and clarifications specifically today. We're also going to look at my campus as an example and some of the expectations that um, that we have for our faculty so that you can see one college's um, effort to make sure that our online learning uh, faculty understand regular and substantive interaction and how to implement it. We'll look at some definitions between distance learning and correspondence courses, which is uh, very central to the idea of this um, RSI or regular and substantive interaction uh, legislation. And then we'll look at some resources. I have actual examples for um, courses and resources that we provide to our faculty. So you can see what we're doing to help inform our faculty and help them to reach out to their students and engage with the students, building that instructor presence using the guidelines from regular and substantive interaction. So I do not have the chat up. Let me pop that up very quickly so I don't miss anybody. Um, Okay, so if anybody, um, oh, thank you very much. We've already got the link to the slides in the chat. So I'll go ahead and move us right along. Thank you yes, so much. Yes, we put it for you. Thank you. Guys you guys are Kim. wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and start with kind of, in my opinion, the least exciting part of regular and substantive interaction, and that is the federal regulations. Um, so the federal regulations specifically cover education that uses one or more of the technologies listed in paragraphs one through five, it's paragraph two, sections one through five of this definition. And I'm gonna go over what those are in a moment. And we use this um, educational technology to deliver instructions to students who are separated from their instructor. So no face-to-face, -face, right? Or at least not that portion of the class is face-to-face -face, and to support regular and substantive interaction between the students and the instructor, whether that takes place synchronously or asynchronously. So that is their general idea of what the RSI or regular and substantive interaction regulations are going to cover. So when we look at that, here are the types of technologies that are covered under this legislation. The internet, one-way or two-way transmissions through an open broadcast, and I'm going to minimize, sorry, there we go. Open broadcast, closed circuit, cable, microwave, broadband lines, fiber options, satellite, or wireless communication devices, so we're talking cell phones as well, audio conferences, 
or, and I, this is my favorite, this is sort of the all other things as it applies, other media used in a course in conjunction with any of the technologies listed in the above paragraphs. So really what the federal regulations are covering are all technologies used for distance education. Um, so that if you are using technology to interact with your students, regular and substantive interaction applies to that technology and that interaction with your students. Now, for the purposes of this definition and moving forward, when we say an instructor or a faculty member, what we're talking about is the individual responsible for delivering the course content and who meets the qualifications for instruction established by your institution's accrediting agency. So in our case here in Fort, downtown Fort Worth um, at Tarrant County's uh, Trinity River campus, that is SAC COC. And they have a definition for who is an instructor, how many, um, uh, how many uh, work or uh, how many contact hours they have with the students and who is on the, um, the student information system listed as the lead instructor. We often have co-instructors in a course, but the individual listed in our student information system as the lead instructor is the person responsible for the regular and substantive interaction. So whatever your regulating agency says is the instructor of the course, the legal instructor of the course, that is the person responsible for following these regulations. So that's very important that we um, make sure our faculty understand. Now, this is the part where we break down regular and substantive interaction into two parts. The first part is where they define what substantive interaction means. So we're looking at um, the definition of substantive interaction. It is engaging students in teaching, learning, and assessment consistent with the content under discussion and includes at least two of the following five items. You must be providing direct instruction, whether that's synchronously or asynchronously, right? You must be assessing or providing feedback on a student's coursework. You must be providing information or responding to questions about the content of the course or competency. You must be facilitating a group discussion regarding the content of the course or competency and other instructional activities as approved by the institutions or programs accrediting agency. So for us, that's SAC COC. So really when we talk about substantive, when we're talking about that really substantial quality of interaction, you have to be doing at least two of these items throughout your course. You can't just do them one and done. This needs to be taking place throughout your course. And a lot of you may see things on here that you already know your online instructors are doing all the time, right? So it's very reaffirming to look at this and go, oh yes, we do this, that's great. But what we need to look at next is the next definition and that is of regular interaction, right? It's regular and substantive. So regular interaction is between a student and an instructor or instructors by Pri, um, by prior to the student's completion of the course or competency, one, providing the opportunity for substantive interactions, that previous slides list all those five substantive interactions with the student on a predictable and scheduled basis, commensurate with the length of time in the course and the amount of content in the course. So what we're saying is that your communication with your students, that interaction as faculty with students must be regular and scheduled email me anytime you have a question, does not qualify as regular and scheduled. Office hours, however, where you're available via chat or video or some other means of communication is considered regular and scheduled, right? Predictable and scheduled. And the second item that qualifies under regular is monitoring the student's academic engagement and success and ensuring that as an instructor is responsible for promptly and proactively engaging in substantive interaction with the student when needed on the basis of such monitoring or upon the request of the student. So what that means is that I'm paying attention to how my students are doing in class. Are they engaging in my content? Are they participating in the activities? Are they responding to my feedback? Um, are they joining in in discussions? And are they passing my class? Am I checking their status prior to those times when grades are due or, or prior to um, them getting so far into the course that we're not able um, to have a chance to correct anything. So what we have are five um, definitions of substantial and two definitions of regular, right? So when you put all of this together, what does this wind up looking like? 
What are those expectations? So as you can see in this slide, um, under definition, we have those five substantive um, activities that you must at least do two of throughout the duration of your course regularly, right? Scheduled and regularly, you're doing at least two of these five things. And sometimes those two things may vary. At some point, I'm doing direct instruction. At another point, I am facilitating a discussion. Um, so we know as instructors that we mix these up a little throughout the duration of our course. At um, TCC Connect Campus, in an effort to make sure that we don't miss the bar, we ask that our faculty meet at least three of those defining terms of those substantive interactions throughout their course, even though the federal government only requires that we do two. In doing so, we find that if a faculty member is having a rough semester, if they have a very large class, if something should occur and we have to bring in an outside instructor to replace someone due to illness or injury, we are able to make sure we're still meeting federal regulation because we are going above and beyond those two um, substantive measures uh, at TCC Connect. So that is one way that our campus is addressing making sure our faculty is getting into the classroom and involved in engaging the students. Um, and in those examples, um, in those expectations are that we are running a distance learning course, not a correspondence course. And this language features in the Department of Education uh, legislation. So let's take a quick look at what these words mean, what these courses mean. A correspondence course, and I believe if you have ever taken any online um, higher education courses, you may have run into one of these. Um, I like to call it a dump and run. Um, this is a self-placed course where normally all of the information is dumped into the course at once and you may work through it at your own pace. There's limited or no interaction between the instructor and the learner. The interaction is not regular. It's not scheduled. And this type of course has very limited eligibility, eligibility sorry, for any um, financial aid. And I know that Lindsay Foster, who is on my team, whose work I am, I am uh, demonstrating today, is dropping helpful hints in the, in the chat for you as well. So thank you, Lindsay, for agreeing to come on and share our resources. So a correspondence course really is the student working through provided materials on their own. You know, um, as my, my personal children like to say, back in the day, we used to um, allow students to complete work and they would mail their assignments into an instructor somewhere who would then grade them and return a grade. So we really, it, it is the student independently working through work with very limited access to an instructor or any kind of engagement with the instructor or fellow students. This again is not eligible for a lot of financial aid. The DOE um, brought RSI into being to make sure that we are teaching distance learning courses where interaction may be synchronous or asynchronous, but there is interaction. The interaction is initiated by the instructor. So if you remember the two items that we discussed under regular, it is scheduled and predictable. So office hours, regularly scheduled lectures, um, tutoring hours, right? Um, and it is substantive. I am reaching out and facilitating. I am a part of the discussion. I am checking on you and making sure that you're a little late turning your work and how are you doing? You seem to um, struggle a little on that last quiz. Is there a concept I can go over with you? So I'm working all of that in, but it is initiated by the instructor, not by the student. Sometimes interaction can be um, initiated by the student. I don't understand why I missed this. Can you explain this to me? But when we're talking about qualifying for regular and substantive interaction through the DOE regulations, it needs to be actively initiated by the instructor. Interaction is again, regular and scheduled. And this makes your distance learning course eligible for financial aid. And I did not include a lot of the information on um, campuses and universities that have had issues with regular and substantive interaction in this presentation. But if you're interested in looking at some case studies, we have a large collection of case studies where institutions have been um, penalized and lost, um, had to repay financial aid uh, funds because they did not meet the regular and substantive interaction. Um, part of the reason that the July 2021 uh, clarifications were made was because an earlier attempt to um, force the rescinding of uh, financial aid back to the federal government led in complaints from institutions that the regulations were too vague and unclear. And so in July uh, 2021, those changes to add clarification were accepted by the DOE, and that's why we wound up with these definitions. 
So let's talk. I'm going to take just a quick moment to peek at the chat. I know that Lindsay is probably in there answering all of your questions. Um, Thank you. Jessica Sanchez says, you may have mentioned this, but when you state facilitating discussions, it's not enough to provide a prompt and a grade, but the instructor is needing to respond within the discussion forum. Presence found in the threads, correct. That is absolutely, Jessica, correct. You are supposed to be an active and engaged participant in the learning with your students. You are facilitating and guiding discussion, helping them to make connections. You are the expert, right? You are the subject matter expert. This is your opportunity to allow them to make to provide context for your material, to help them make connections with prior learning, and to look forward to how this learning could connect in their career field, in their chosen course of study, or just in your content area. And I know that Lindsay will be posting and answering some of those questions, but I will pop in every once in a while just to add. So thank you, Jessica, that's a great question. And I'll actually show you some examples of that in just a moment. So here are some suggested scheduled course activities. So if you are in a position where you are working with faculty or you're a faculty member yourself, it can be overwhelming to think of how am I supposed to get all of this regularly um, scheduled substantive interaction into my course? Some of you say, I do this all the time. I love to be engaged with my students and I'm constantly getting in there and, and mixing things up and conversing with my students online. But here are some ways to help those who are perhaps coming into the online environment for the first time or who are not as adept at building those digital relationships where they may be experts at that in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, so you can include welcome announcement videos, an overview of course video, surveying students to find out the most popular times to host your possible live activities in your course. You can review discussion board responses. Um, you can have talk about common themes, um, anything important points that maybe you're seeing your students are are showing a gap in understanding and go over those to make sure you're drilling that home these scheduled course activities like scheduled announcements and and reviews of discussion board topics help to kind of put a a final ending on a unit of study or a theme of study or even just an assignment or a discussion and help the students to have that moment of reflection back and reaffirmation of the learning targets or objectives um, so again, live recorded lectures to discuss. A live recorded lecture where you have everyone on mute and no one is allowed to chat with you or ask questions does not qualify for regular and substantive interaction. The students must be able to interact with you during that session. Um, again, office hours um, where you allow them to chat with you or to set up um, or to come into an already established webinar like this one in a Zoom or a Teams meeting or, or a Google Meet will meet those requirements as long as it is regularly scheduled and the students know that they can go at a specific time. My office hours are Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from three to five, and they know that they can get assistance from you there. Um, again, uh, interactive live recorded lectures, synchronous activities such as breakout escape rooms, interactive gamification like Kahoot, or um, if you're not familiar with Socrative's race Gim kit. These are all gamified tools that can be used to get your um, your online students involved with each other in the content in a synchronous environment. You can survey students to determine halfway through the course, even sooner if you like, what's working for you, what's not working, what can you tweak in your class before you reach the end to make sure they're getting the interaction that they need. Planning and scheduling these interactions that are initiated by the instructor and allow for the students to engage with you, with each other, and with the content, while offering an equitable option to those who may not be able to attend, will all count towards RSI activity. So um, let me pop in here and let's look at, here's a checklist of RSI options to give you some idea of the variety that you can include with your faculty or in your own courses. And um, you can model a lot of this. If you're someone who provides professional development to your staff and faculty, modeling RSI in a digital format is also important. So you can, um, we use Canvas LMS by Instructure.com um, as our uh, learning management system. So you'll see a lot of references to Canvas in here, but you can substitute that word with your learning management management system name, whatever that may be. Um, we use Canvas Inbox to follow up with students who have late or missing work. In fact, our LMS has a feature that allows us to automatically message any every student who is late, missing work, has achieved a specific score. 
so that that um, regular and substantive interaction doesn't necessarily always have to be your work is late or perhaps you didn't score very well. It can also be thank you for turning your work in early or I see that you got a 95 on your or higher on your assignment. I wanted to say congratulations way to make those connections. I'm excited to see that you're grasping the concepts. So again, that positive interaction. This is an opportunity for that as well. Weekly academic related announcements. It is always fun to post announcements where you talk about the Cowboys football game or what the weather's going to be like or the surf report or anything that is fun that your class enjoys that builds a sense of community. But if we're going to count something for regular and substantive interaction, it must be regarding the academic related content of the course. So a weekly related announcement. Um, this is what we covered last week. These are some of the gaps we saw in our learning and here are some resources. And here's what's coming up this week. Getting your students back into thinking about the course and making those connections. Um, and I will provide links for you all to some of the resources that Lindsay is also sharing in the chat in this presentation. Thanks, Lindsay. You're awesome. Um, we also want to look at those regularly scheduled office hours, providing feedback to students who are on track or, um, or have achieved what they needed to do, and providing feedback for those students who perhaps have not. Um, and one of the things that I really want to talk about is providing feedback using a rubric um, that allows for specific and ind individualized feedback. Um, rubrics let students understand exactly what their expectation is. And by scoring students on a rubric, it is easy for them to identify what pieces of that rubric they're missing. And as each student will turn in their own work and will receive a different grading system, that will individualize their feedback. But I know that in a lot of our learning management systems and a lot of our textbooks, we have these automated quizzes. Right, and they can come in and take a quiz and it will be automatically graded. And a lot of people ask me if it's regular and substantive interaction, if they take the quiz, they get a grade. That's their feedback. And that does not qualify under the DOE regulations. You actually have to provide individualized feedback. However, a lot of these same quizzing features allow for you to insert positive feedback if a student gets the question right. And um, additional information or feedback if they get the question wrong. So for example, if I'm giving a test on photosynthesis and a student chooses B and the correct answer was A, I can say, um, if the student selects an incorrect answer, um, here's the text I want it to say. And it will pop up on screen and say, make sure you review chapter two and the video on photosynthesis and try again. So I'm rerouting the student to inform informational feedback um, on what, uh, what chapter, what video they need to study. I can give hints, I can give clues, but it will be individualized to the student because not all students are going to miss the same questions in the same class at the same time. Um, positive student feedback, as we mentioned before, summarizing content, responsive feedback using um, features built into your LMS, personalizing welcome messages to your students, um, and then offering opportunities for student feedback, such as a Q&A, or um, a Q&A forum, for example, where students can ask questions and they can crowdsource their answers from each other and from you, or an exit ticket activity at the end of a synchronous session where they reflect or make connections to address instruction and provide some of that formative feedback for you to see where your students are that allow you to interact with them. So um, those are just a few of the checklist examples. So what I'd like to do is show you a couple of the actual active um, items that we are sharing um, with our faculty at this time. So what I'm going to do very quickly is just minimize my presentation because I have these pulled up for you guys. So I'm going to exit my slideshow and I'm going to share. Um, at Tarrant County College Connect Campus, we have an instructional resource hub for our faculty. We built it in our um, LMS so that our faculty can see us modeling some of the features of the LMS while they use our tool. And we have a page, a whole section on regular and substantive interaction for our faculty. So we have all of these items available and our faculty can click through and receive links, videos, um, resources to help them with regular and substantive interaction. So we are already providing um, a, a set location for them to come and find information, examples. This is obviously the, the legislation. 
we have more examples. They can see cases and examples, correspondence versus distance education, and some of those tools that Lindsay has been sharing in the chat. Um, the importance of RSI, we really need to talk to our fa faculty about the why. Why is this important? Um, not only does it help us to meet compliance with federal regulation, but it's best practice in terms of engaging actively with your students in the classroom about your content. It shows you to be an involved and participatory instructor. It increases that instructor presence in your course, and it provides for a better learning environment for your students. And so per we provide all of these as well as resources and materials for our faculty to be able to come and get these at any time. Um, we also have, and this course, we have a course that our faculty can take that um, is run also by Lindsay Foster, who's in the chat today. Um, and so there is a two hour course that they can take for professional development that is an introduction to regular and substantive interaction. And they can work through um, information and assignments and discussions where they can self-paced work through this course and earn a certificate for completion of our regular and substantive interaction course. Um, we also provide all kinds of other resources. So here we have, um, these are linked for you in the presentation so that you can come and look, but we have a brochure that was created for our faculty as an introductory item. We have it in both print and digital. And it is a magazine style brochure for our faculty that explains regular, oops, sorry, bouncing right through there, sorry, there we go. Regular and substantive interaction for our faculty. And it breaks it down into easy to understand concepts with examples and strategies for design of their courses, delivery of content, and some frequently asked questions. So when we introduced RSI to our faculty, we were able to give them this as a resource so that they could hang on to this. And this is kept in the instructional resource hub for their, their benefit. We also have um, examples right out of the classroom for regular and substantive interaction from examples of welcome messages to instructor activities, announcements, expectations for student participation. Um, so we really tried to give them the, the why and the how um, in all of this. Now, one of my favorite things that um, was put together for our faculty by Ms. Foster is our regular and substantive interaction framework. So she gives a brief overview of how all of our interactions take place in class, but and she gives some examples, but this has been by far a favorite of our faculty, and this provides characteristics of RSI by what it is and what it isn't. Right? RSI initiated by the instructor is not just creating discussion posts in Canvas, like Jessica mentioned, it's also actively facilitating the conversation that develops. It's not just offering office hours, it's asking students to visit during office hours or scheduling a phone call or video conference during that time. It, using a, it's not just using a rubric to grade assignments, but adding specifically personalized feedback in the comments um, for individual students' assignments and not just having students submit quizzes that are automatically graded, but creating perhaps a video lecture that highlights frequently missed questions on the recent quiz and indicates portions of the reading or course materials to review for an upcoming midterm, for example. And so there are several of these what it is and what it isn't on this document that you guys all now have access to. Thank you, Ms. Foster. Um, to help with some of those questions that invariably come up when working with faculty as they try to really, um, figure out where the edges of RSI and those fine line definitions really start to blend together. So there's a lot of really good resources and information here for you to look at. Um, we have some task cards so that if you're doing a training, you can set these task cards up around the room and have faculty move from one to the other to, um, to attempt the activities on each of these task cards so that they can practice their um, regular and substantive interaction as well. And there are two different kinds of checklists, both a, a document and a spreadsheet checklist where they can um, individuals in a course can actually evaluate their own course and determine uh, how often they're doing it, what characteristic of RSI they're meeting, and where they're meeting it. So we these are some of the resources and tools that we've provided for our faculty um, at Tarrant County College. And I'm going to bounce back over here to the chat really quickly. And there we go. Let me pull that back up. There we go. And I will put this page back up for you guys. And so I know that Lindsay has been sharing her resources in the chat. She's fabulous and I have to give her all of the credit. She was assigned this as her first task in to Tarrant County and had 
has done an amazing job sharing these resources with our faculty. Um, are there any questions that she has not already answered in the chat that we can address? And these are all hyperlinked. I will apologize. The instructional resource hub and the course are not available to the public. They are behind our, um, our TCC Connect login. However, if you're interested or curious about what is included in those items, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to share um, how we share our resources with our faculty. Great. Uh, I see that Lindsay has been doing a great job. <laughs> yes, she's amazing. <laughs> I asked her to so, come in and help. <laughs> and definitely it was a perfect team. Uh, but any, any other questions? This is the time. Oh, mira, Jessica Sanchez is the RSI course required of all faculty, the two hour course? It is not, Jessica. We do not require it of all faculty. We did provide regular and substantive interaction training um, at, uh, we have a week long conference at the beginning of the fall and the spring semester. And we did offer training in RSI for all of our faculty during those events. It is now available for those who would like a refresher or who are new to the campus, but we do not require it. We do, however, require RSI training um, at Tarrant County uh, College. The Connect campus is the online campus for the district. And so anyone who wants to teach online in Tarrant County College must take a course called the Online Instructor Certification Course, which Lindsay has just popped in the chat. And mm -hmm. in that course, there is an entire section on regular and substantive interaction that our faculty must pass before they can be awarded their certificate to teach online for our college. So we do address it with all um, instructors who are certified to teach online with our, our college district. And we are a district of six campuses, our online campus at Connect, and then five physical location campuses where students can take courses both face-to-face -face and in a blended model. Precisely. Any other question? We have plenty of time to yes. make sure that you uh, clarify all the doubts. I know the, there is a very a, a lot of different uh, confusion. Yeah, there is another. I know. Well, that that was Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, she's she's providing more information. Yeah, we, yeah, we do offer the RSI course, um, uh -huh. the two hour course, to all faculty at Connect at uh, Tarrant County College who would like to learn uh -huh. more about the regular and substantive interaction. Absolutely, and our um. Our uh, instructional resource hub is open to any faculty member in the district, so all mm -hmm. six campuses can benefit from all of the resources that are housed there as well. That's part of our one campus goal at Tarrant County um, mm -hmm. College, so that all six campuses work together. As, oh, oh my gosh, yes, Kristen, Dr. Kelton is our Director of Academic Affairs and her team has a really important role. Her e-faculty coaches survey mm -hmm. RSI um, in each assigned section. Um, it, faculty members who are uh, teaching for us who are being audited by any faculty coach, um, they do check and go in to look in their live courses to see their implementation. And then they provide um, invaluable data to both our data team, to my team, um, to our leadership team. Um, so we are um, actively uh, monitoring the use and the implementation of these mm -hmm. strategies. Um, I'm a big fan of that which is expected should be inspected. And so um, Dr. Kelton's team is great about working with our faculty to make sure they're getting those regular and substantive interaction um, interactions into their online courses. So yes, that's a very comprehensive team in order to cover all, all the bases and and how do you get to Melana to how do you do identify if if I don't see any other question uh, the areas that you Bella, in order to prepare all these materials all this is something that the through surveys or how how do you how do you, how do you do that uh, Regular and substantive interaction, actually, the, the final um, the final changes, the clarification came out in July of 2021, and I uh -huh. came on board at Tarrant County Connect Campus um, in June. So it oh. was all over all of my listservs and all of my feeds, uh -huh. and I immediately took it to um, my boss and said, um, are we doing this? And, and they all mm -hmm. said, well, we definitely should be. So mm -hmm. um, we decided that that was definitely something we needed to make sure we were focusing on to ensure that we were in compliance. Um, mm -hmm. We also look at other areas not only from federal regulation compliance areas, um, for example, um, 
ADA compliance, accessibility, Section 508 compliance, like Lindsay mentions in the chat, um, mm -hmm. but regular and substantive in, uh, interaction compliance. So we do look at, at items that are compliance based, but we also look at them from the, set, the standard of how is this producing a better environment for our students to learn in? How is this going to help us with student success and student mm -hmm. retention? So instead of beating everyone with the compliance stick, what we're trying okay. to show them is that these best practices, while yes, they meet compliance with the federal government, also provide better access and better inclusion for all of our students when we do take the time to really ramp up our regular and substantive interaction. We start to see um, more satisfaction rates in our students. We start to see um, you know, yeah. that, that greater involvement of faculty in the course. When we do the same thing with our um, ADA compliance and our accessibility compliance, we start to see classes that are more inclusive for all students, not just our students with accommodations or disabilities. So we really mm -hmm. try to look at what is it that's going to best improve the, uh, the student mm -hmm. environment? What is it that's going to support our faculty in providing a quality um, learning environment in our digital environment? Um, and there are, of course, as all of you, I'm sure are aware, there are district initiatives and, and those sorts of things to be considered as well. So we try to take all of that. We survey our faculty. We, um, we use a lot of data from that online uh, instructor certification course. Um, when we start to see areas where people in that course are struggling, for example, mm -hmm. RSI or accessibility mm -hmm. or the um, aligning of learning objectives to our assessments and activities in our courses, then we start to provide um, additional resources and training in those areas to help beef up some of those um, those gaps in understanding for our faculty. So a lot yeah. of the ways we would do in a classroom, we do the same yeah. thing with our faculty. Great. Jessica Sanchez has a question, uh, Kim. And yes. she said the e-faculty coaching, who are the coaches? I apologize, I missed that. Are they experienced, experienced online faculty? Yes, and I'm going to attempt this, but Dr. Kelton, if I get it wrong, please correct me. Um, our e-faculty coaches are experienced um, online instructors. Um, they have been through the online instructor certification course, and they are Quality Matters trained. Um, we do use Quality Matters as a um, reference or a... Uh, a bar for which we measure our courses so that they meet the quality matter quality matters criteria. Mm -hmm. um, but they do have online teaching experience and they come in and are trained and then they coach our faculty up in those areas. And Dr. Kelton, did I miss anything? I want to make sure I represent her department faithfully there. I think I'm not sure it was Lindsay or Dr. yeah, she Kelton popped on who there. you put and thank you, Maida Rivera, for your comment. She said that Terrific. it helps with retention, definitely. Yes. Absolutely. And then um, Dr. Kelton added that these are faculty who do not teach for us. They may teach for other institutions, however, but they are not current employees teaching okay. at, um, at TCC Connect. So um, it would be great to see how that group came about and the support that they get. Okay, so Dr. Kelton, I think we have a connection there for you with, um, yeah. with Jessica Sanchez. So you two could talk about your e-faculty coaching program. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, it's been yeah. wonderful to work with Dr. Kelton and her group. She provides us with such amazing um, data and being able to share that data together. We have a, um, a campus-wide data team that looks at student data and faculty data, and, and um, we look at our satisfaction, our retention rates, our student success rates. We look at information like um, the information that Dr. Kelton's group collects on, on regular and substantive interaction and accessibility and all of these things, and we come together as a group to decide um, what actions we're going to take, what supports we're going to offer, and what that data means. So there's a whole lot of data-informed decision making. I don't want to say data driven because there are so many other factors that have to be considered, but we certainly are using the data to inform decision making on our campus about what needs um, our faculty or students may have. So and Dr. Kelton's team plays a big part in providing a lot of that data for us. Excellent. But I see that they exchange their emails in in the chat. So that's what well, one of the add values of our webinars that not only eh, vela, eh, the speaker is from one of our expert, eh, vela, uh, expert resource from our member institution, but we have colleagues from all of our member institutions that they can definitely learn from each other. Absolutely. And it's a space to collaborate. And of course, since we, I, oh, everybody are in the same boat, as I always uh, eh, vela, eh, mention. And Absolutely. Why, we wouldn't want anybody to reinvent the wheel if we can share what we've exactly. done and it helps them advance um, towards where they need to be much, much quicker. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and we already have 
about exactly. that. <laughs> and, and I would like to take this opportunity to recognize Dr. Dr. Carlos Morales, who is actually head uh, board of director, uh, the chair of the head board of director, and he's actually the president of Tarrant County College Connect Campus. That he was the one who uh, uh, referred your name to us, uh, so you can talk about this topic, and we definitely appreciate uh, his, uh, his recommendation on this important topic. So, any other questions, comments, comments? No, come on, no comments. Mira, mm -hmm. I'm learning to <laughs> with the subtitles. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is we just uh, figured it out that we have this. Uh, Bella, uh, soon now have this feature available, and we are happy to be able to, uh, Bella, uh, put it available to everyone. So you you don't have any limitations in terms of Bella, of understanding fully understanding this topic. So. Uh, Someone Elvis is asking, but that's for us, the certificate form. You need to remember to, you can either scroll, scroll up eh, the past messages on the chat and find the link, or Maribel can, will put it already. She already put it. So please uh, click on that link. Eh, so you can, eh, don't forget to click on that link so you can submit your information so you receive the a participate a certificate of participation uh, for this webinar, very important. And also, let me see someone else. Just want to thank you for such valuable information. Marixa Sostre said, it was a great presentation. Said uh, Ramirez, Angie Marie, excellent job. Uh, uh, I don't see any other questions. All are comments of your wonderful work. And I hope, uh, Kim, let me, you know, we have the best practices showcase and I think definitely <laughs> this is the best practice. So I encourage you and Lindsay to come to Puerto Rico and uh, submit a proposal, Bella, of course. I'm going uh, to have to tell Dr. Morales that we, yes, you know, okay, we need to go. Submit a proposal <laughs> so you can showcase this interesting, uh, Bella, and sharing in a in a more uh, with uh, with other colleagues that will be here and also connecting because it will be in a hybrid modality. I would love to have you in person, but also you can connect uh, if you if your sure. proposal is selected that I I I I have no doubt it will. So yeah. please uh you have until November 18, not only for you but for the rest and uh, remember to look for your innovative uh projects and 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 topics like this one that is definitely uh <laughs> it's a very important topic since this, this, uh, the understanding of this topic depends not only the retention of our students, but the law uh, to facilitate and, and comply with the regulations of the Department of Education. And we hope that definitely you have enjoyed this topic as well as I did and I learned a lot. Uh, thank you, Kim. Any additional comments you may want to share before we say bye? I'm just really grateful for the opportunity to get to share with everyone. And if you have any questions or would like to see any of our examples or you have a chance to process and you think of something, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, but um, I know Dr. Kelton and Lindsay and I are here to help if you guys would like any any other resources. Definitely. So thank you so much. Actually, the proposals could be up to three participants. Oh, so the three well, of you can go. come. <laughs> Because, of course, we don't want to live uh, behind uh, Dr. Uh, Christy. Dr. Uh, right. yes. Bring her. yes, exactly. <laughs> so please uh, save it on your agenda already and, and, and don't uh, forget to submit a proposal very easily to do it. And re again, in the chat, you will find again the click to request the certificate of participation. Remember that you will be receiving also is an email with the link for the survey. It's very important for us to voilà, evaluate these uh, topics and, and, and webinars and also help us identify the services that we can continue developing for students and the best way to share them. And, and follow us in social media and also uh, go to head.org to next event. In the next event uh, menu, you will see all the different events that we we will we still have for this semester and of course we open next semester with the best practices showcase and our 30 anniversary that will be great the three decades of of promoting 
the integration of technology into higher education and widening the opportunities for students. And, and we are so happy uh, if all of you can join us. Thank you to all who uh, connect today. I see Francisco Garcia, one of our collaborators and Heads Academy faculty here. Also, I say hi to Raimundo. And I see others that have been uh, uh, always connecting, uh, 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 being with us in our webinar. Thank you, Kim. This is your first time with us, but I hope not the last one. So I hope to invite you to the next, a, another webinar with a, a, another uh, topic that I know a, you have expertise on. And thank you, everyone. A, my last, uh, a, a, my last a remark is that the, this webinar has been recorded. So you will be a, in the same page that you register in, pre, in previous webinars, you will see uh, once the recording is ready, you will see the, the link uh, to the recording. And we already, I think we download your presentation. If not, if you can send it to us by email in a PDF format, just to make sure. And then we will share the presentation as well with this useful uh, uh, information that you shared. Thank you everyone, have a good afternoon and we hope to see you in our next event or webinar that will be, let me think, oh, ah, Descubre Tus Ahorros, November 18, and that's the same day the, the Best Practices Showcase Call for Proposal closed, so November 18 is our next uh, day to connect. Have a wonderful day, and thank you all for sharing uh, and for taking your time and connect with us. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you, Dr. Kelton. Have a great day. Bye-bye.